Hello, welcome to Northampton Economics Tutor website. And today we are looking at AQA Economics Unit 2, the national economy. And the examination paper is from 19th of January 2011. In the first question, which one of the following would be an example of a loosening of fiscal policy? And I have put on D as an answer, saying a rise in the government budget deficit, which is the fiscal policy. And it's an expansionary fiscal policy. Why? Because the government is uh, having more expenses and less taxes. So it's increasing the deficit. In question number two, the diagram below shows two aggregate demand curves and the short run supply SRAS curve for the economy. As we can see, the AD curve has moved outside AD2. That means an increase in aggregate demand, which we can either use the formula that AD is equal to C plus G plus I plus X minus M. So if we look over here, it says an increase in, we could say exposed because X minus M going up will lead 81, 82. I've also done this question by the process of elimination. I said savings is a leakage, so the AD will shift left. The exchange rate, if that increases, there'll be less exposed. Again, the AD will shift left. And if the rates of taxation goes, less consumption, consumption falls, the AD again shifts left. So A is the answer. In question number three, I've put down B, real national income, which means increase in real GDP. And that's how we measure economic growth. In question number four, which one of the following is most likely to result in a demand side shock to the UK economy? And I've said UK interest rates. Why? Because if they increase, that will reduce consumptions as households and uh, the firms will borrow less money. Uh, households uh, let's say, for example, if they want to buy a car and everything, they will postpone it. Why? Because the interest rates and the installments will be higher if the interest rates goes up. And the investment firms will postpone the investments again for the same reason that they will have to pay out more money. In question number five, the relationship between the growth of national income and the resulting increase in investment is termed as accelerator. Why? Because businesses invest in capital if there is a growth in demand. In question number six, I've put down C as the answer, and I have given the reason that people have more money, and strong pound will encourage people to buy cheap imports. Also, strong pound will make British exports more expensive for other countries to buy. Hence, C is the answer. In question number seven, I have said D, there is a negative output cap to encourage consumption and increase AD or shift AD right. So that's why the MPC of the Bank of England will meet each month to decide on the rate of interest that is most likely to help it achieve the government's inflation target. And the MPC is most likely, in this case, it is decreasing the interest rates to address the problem of a recession. In question number eight, all other things being equal, which one of the following is most likely to lead to a decrease in aggregate demand? Again, we have the formula AD equals C plus G plus I plus X minus M. We know if the imports goes up, the net value of exports take away imports will decrease and shifting the AD left. So A is the answer. In question number nine, I've said A, UK exports will increase. Why? We know by experience British goods will be cheaper and, is, uh, and the other countries will want to buy them as they are cheap. In question number 10, there is a shift of LRAS curve outside and increase. So more investment, more output. Hence B is the answer, which is improvements in the banking system that increases the funds available for investment. In question number 11, which one of the following is most likely to be an example of cyclical unemployment? So you're talking about the economic cycle, which is recession. So offset C is the answer. Why? Because in the downturn, construction uh, industry is the first that is badly. In question number 12, C is the answer, a rise in real national income. And I've put on over here, yes, as AD equals AS, the economy is not overheated. Question number 13, in October 2008, the Chancellor of Exchequer announced plans to increase government spending on construction projects such as school, medical building, housing, and leisure centers in order to help prevent the UK economy from entering recession. Such a policy could be considered an example of because it's increased government spending by the government, we know it's fiscal policy or the, and it's expansionary because we are spending more than what we are collecting in revenues.
in question number 14 B which is government spending is the answer why too much money chasing too few goods because the AD has shift right therefore it is demand full inflation in question number 15 all other things being equal in the long run a fall in the exchange rate is likely to make British goods competitive hence for D is the answer in question number 16 the SRAS curve has moved left because of cost push but AD1 has moved to AD2 why because the interest rates must have fallen down therefore more loans demand increases hence B is the answer in question number 17 D is the answer decrease in house prices probably because of the increase in interest rates yes because less demand due to high mortgage installments so people will not take out mortgages in question number 18 we can see in year 1, 2, 3, 4 everything is below 2.75 I have plotted a graph uh, plotted a graph to show you that 2.75 and we can see the curve which is negative output gap which is recession so unemployment increases in recession in question number 19 uh, growing inflationary pressures why because the exchange rate has increased in question number 19 an appreciation of exchange rate will make the British goods uh, non-competitive they uh, in question number 19 the British goods will become uncompetitive if the exchange rate appreciates that means it will become expensive for foreign consumers to buy British goods therefore there will be less exports and because the pound is expensive there will be more imports so there is more goods in the economy than the demand is and this should reduce the inflationary pressure and also decrease or decline the balance of payment surplus in question number 20 I have used process of elimination to explain this question I have said tax, uh, taxation is fiscal policy the inflation rate is a target in part D government spending is again a fiscal policy so for a monetary policy it has to be the exchange rate in question number 21 in question number 21 we can see the AD1 has actually moved outside to AD2 which means the aggregate demand has gone up I have again used process of elimination I've said A is not the answer as it takes long time B is not the answer will reduce or shift AD left D is not the answer due to cheap loans more imports and C an expansionary monetary policy low interest rates more demand due to cheap loans and that is the answer and question number 22 which one of the following is an example of a fiscal policy having a direct supply side effect so government expenditure on retraining schemes increases factor mobility so the north south divide could be got rid of could be trained the people who is heading north allowing them to look for jobs in London I've also used process of elimination I've said A is a monetary policy B is again demand side monetary C is monetary so D is a good example of a fiscal policy having a direct supply side effect in question number 23 the AD curve has decreased moved in from AD1 to AD2 we can see that is the SRAS LRAS so there is spare capacity in the economy and that could be uh, if you're moving inside the TPF could be due to cyclical employment recession question number 24 which one of the following is most likely to reduce the level of investment in a particular economy I have said B is the answer giving the reason businesses will not invest and reduce existing stocks question number 25 foreign companies build new factories in a country to take advantage of cheap labor and cheap land all other things being equal the result of this investment for that country economy would be and I've said the answer is D a shift in both its aggregate demand curve and long run aggregate supply curve why because demand for construction goods capital goods and more wages and also more output so we can see over here that the demand curve will increase because of the demand for these sort of goods aggregate supply curve will also move right why because of the new foreign direct investment in that country